Oh, she's like, has a down syndrome. <laughs> I find them. You find them? You give me a reason not to stream your fat ass out here in the middle of the fucking night. But I get to like watch you through hump, right? Watch? Yeah. She's my girlfriend, Jugs. And I'm your best friend, Mike. We're going after a bus full of hot schoolgirls, and all you're concerned about is peeping in on me and Steph. Aim higher. So if you find them, you get to do anything? I know what you meant, man! Dude, is this a real gun? Hey! Put that the fuck away! What, what? are you doing with that? That's my dad! Put it away! You drive around with a fucking loaded gun? You think I'm crazy? <laughs> Look for those panties instead of your fucking bullshit! You want some peanut butter? No. Come on. Get the fuck off me. Trying to butt in the lap. Yes. I like that. You like that, yeah. you fat fuck? Let's get out of here. Come on. Steph, Woo! here I come. Stuff anyway. Oh, I got. It. What the fuck, man? <laughs> Let's just keep it warm. Fuck, dude, you owe me for gas money too. G gas money? Yeah. <laughs> Jugs, you siphoned that shit out of your fucking mother's tank. Snatch at five o'clock. Uh, right up there. Right up. this chick, dude. We got a gun.
Good. All right, let's see some kicks. Crescent. Again, crescent. All right, roundhouse. That's good. Let me show you something. When you're chambering the kick, you really gotta pivot, okay? You gotta use this leg and pivot, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Quit goofing around. Do you wanna learn this or not? All right, let's go. Let's go, let's see you, come on. Right here, this one. Okay. Yeah, pivot all the way through. If you don't, you're gonna break your ankle, all right? Come on. Stop, stop. Seriously, do you wanna learn this or not, okay? Hey, you got something in your back. Oh. <laughs> hey. Hey. Just so you know, you'll never be able to take your big brother. Hey. Hello. How are you doing? Mm. You're sweating. Mm, cool. You like it. <laughs> All right, we're going to check on Kevin, okay? Always aim for the nose, okay? Actually, you should punch him in the throat. You can fight through a broken nose, but you can't fight if you can't breathe. I'm teaching him how to defend himself without going to jail. Well, Rusty taught me how to finish my opponent before the fight started. He'd say, once you know how to end it, you can choose when to end it. Teach him right and let mercy be at his discretion. Or I can teach him how to punch and let him decide where to punch. Oh, Barney, you big softy. That's why Rusty would kick your ass. I'd probably fight Rusty a lot different than I would fight a nine-year-old. Well, that's the difference between you and Rusty. He would probably fight you the exact same way he would fight a nine-year-old. Izzy, you're an idiot. I was just kidding, Big Barn. He knows that. Come on, get him up. Little Boots, who are you afraid of? I'm gonna go wash up. Thanks again, Barn. Hey, be ready by seven o'clock. We'll have breakfast before school. Okay. Who's he afraid of? I saw a kid giving him a hard time when I pulled up. When he saw me, he took off. So how's school? Everything's fine. I can handle this myself. Not for nothing, but maybe that's why you got beat up. Can't you play baseball or something? By the time I was your age, I was already hunting with Rusty. Good for you. How come Rusty hasn't called in so long? He called last week. Yeah, but he, he always needed to call when I'm at school or out with Barn. It's really tough over there right now, especially for his unit. And in all fairness, how is Rusty supposed to know when you're out with Barn? He writes pretty often, doesn't he? I guess. But Daryl's dad is stationed there too, and he writes- Daryl's dad's a faggot, so there's nothing else for him to do! Rusty is the greatest Marine that's ever lived to fuck Daryl and his dad! Hope you don't decorate your bonsai tree like your Christmas tree. Poor thing groaning from all the weight. Please, no more. Can't hold on much longer. Just out of curiosity, why didn't you tell me you wanted to learn how to fight? Is it because I'm a girl? 
What? Am I too hard on you? How about some cake? You think I get on Barney's nerves? No, do you? I don't know. Sometimes I just think he hangs out around here because he thinks I have no friends. Does he ever consider it was Barney that has no friends? Dad and him are best friends. I mean best friends ever. And that's why it's important to Barn to make sure we're okay. He introduced Mom and Dad. Did you know that? I know Rusty reminds him of Dad a lot. And Barney wouldn't hang out with you, little boots, unless he wanted to. Barney does what he wants to do. Izzy, we need to talk. I'm joining the Marines. I wanted to join three years ago, but you know, I wanted to be here for you and Kevin. I know Bonnie pays me pretty decent down at the shop, but he overpays me. And he doesn't even really need the help to begin with. It's borderline charity. With the signing bonus and the job training I'll receive in the Corps, I'll do it. Look, sis. I stepped up as head of this household. I would have enlisted right out of high school. I need you to step up now. I mean, Kevin's five. You know, with him in school, it's like free daycare and I'll be sending money home. Is that you don't want to look after Kev? I love Little Boots and I will always be here for him. Well, then what is it? I mean, am I supposed to just stay here too? Yes. We could raise him together like our son. Or family. Done yet? All out of your system? So your brother still hasn't called? Nope. Not since last week, and of course I missed him. I haven't spoke to him in almost a year. 
He always seems to call when I'm not there. I think he's mad at me. No way. You're too young to remember this, but he used to take you everywhere. That's what Izzy says. But when I told her that other kids have relatives who are also in the war and come back and say hello, she went nuts. Yeah, but she's been working really hard to provide for both of you. It's been really hard on her. Yeah, but she seems to freak out over really weird things. She's a girl. That's what they do. They freak out over weird things. How are you feeling? Better. What are you going to do when you see this kid? Nothing. Not unless he starts with me again. His name is Tommy. The bully. I think he kidnapped Edward Wellen, my teacher's pet rat. My teacher, Mr. Putsky, would always bring his rat to school with him. And then sometime during lunch a couple of weeks ago, the rat disappeared. Not just the rat, the entire rat cage. <sighs> Mr. Putsky's been really upset ever since. I think he thinks it's Tommy too, but he never says so. Every day he's asked if anyone knows anything, but nobody does. I think Tommy does. All right, class. I want you all to enjoy your Christmas vacations and give my best to your families. Oh, wait one moment, please. Um, as you all know, Edward Whalen has been missing for 12 days now. Should anyone have any information regarding his whereabouts? There will be no punishment. I just want him back. I'm sure it'll turn up. I hope so, Kevin. You know, Eddie's not a class pet. He, he's my friend. I would only bring him here so that he wouldn't be cooped up alone when I was here. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Kevin. I'm taking Edward Wellen back to Mr. Puss. You are? How? What are you doing? Keeping track of my experiment. What experiment? To see how long a rat can live without food or water. It's been 12 days. Stop it. Give him something to eat. OK. We'll feed him your face. Get off of me. Get off of me. Get off. Off of me! Oh, get the sister! Edward Whalen, I presume? Do you want me to hunt them down? <laughs> I have to get him back to Mr. Putsky. Actually, I think Barnes waiting for you out front of school. Why don't you go with him? I'll bring Putsky as a rat. 
Okay, and tell him that it was Tommy who stole him. And tell him that he was starving him this whole time. Are you sure you want to be the one to tell him who did it? No. Besides, if I told him they were starving him, I think I'd make him cry. I'll feed the rat. You go catch up with Barn. What are you going to tell him? Nothing. I'm just going to leave him on his front door. Return him anonymously. That way, you don't get stuck answering questions, explaining all this. And Mr. Whalen will be the only rat in your class. Thanks. Barty, guess what? I helped rescue Mr. Whalen. You teach him? No, his rat. I follow Tommy. That's a bully kid, and his friends, and I found where they were keeping him. Did you kick Timmy's ass? Tommy, no. Rudy and Cordy grabbed me, but I did stand up to them. And when Izzy showed up, they ran like chickens. I saw Izzy a few minutes ago. Is she taking you home today? No, she's feeding Mr. Whalen. What? You starve an animal almost to death. You can change his temperament. Give him a mean streak. Makes him more aggressive. But I doubt that'll happen because you saved him in time. You think so? Yeah, besides, Izzy's feeding him. He'll be fine. You sure you don't want to give him back to your teacher? No, Izzy's going to send it un mon anom anonymously. Mm -hmm. Probably for the best. Right. Ready to go? Uh huh. Make sure you take better care of my brother than you did your rat. Are you threatening me? He's in the trunk, the other one. Cory! Rudy and Cory. I don't know which one's worse. Where does Cory live? Sycamore and Ellen. Rudy, why are you so quick to give up your friends? It's kind of fucked up, don't you think? What's that short for? Rudolph? Must be. Right? I want to go home! What else could Rudy be short for? <sighs> Must be tough having that kind of name, especially this time of the year. The most wonderful time of the year.
So what are you gonna get your dad for his birthday? Does he need any tools? I don't know. Why don't you make him something? You're good at that. What do I make him? Hmm, I'll have to think about it. If you want to help out, why don't you go get me some more hay? If you scream, I will snap your neck and pitchfork your mom. Get your hands up. Would Rust Day really go for the throat? Not usually. Kevin, if you punch someone in the throat, you can kill him. It's a last resort. Your dad was a Marine. He taught Rusty how to fight like a Marine. He's the reason Rusty became a Marine. Sometimes you have no choice but to use violence. But you have to be careful not to cross the line. So why did Rusty teach Izzy all that stuff? Because she's a girl, and Rusty never wanted her to take chances if she was in danger. That, and because she's so short, she can't reach any higher than the throat. <laughs> Don't tell her I said that. Seriously. So what's the deal? Your parents beat you? Is that it? You're abused or something? You seem to have it pretty good at home. Are you just a little asshole? <laughs> you seem like the ringleader. I know Rudy here isn't. Why were you starving the rat? Curiosity? To feel powerful? Why? And don't tell me what you think I want to hear. Be honest. Did you ever kill anything before? He burned the ants. They're ants. I didn't think they counted. They count, Tommy. They count. Do you burn ants too? Mm. So you like to torture things smaller than you. Is that why you torment my brother? No, we were just messing around. Ask him. I know. You're the school bully. You beat up kids smaller than you, not just Kevin. Ever beat up big kids? No. Billy McCannis refused to let Tommy ride his bike. Tommy grabbed the handlebars, but Billy hit him, and he didn't do anything back. There's nothing wrong with hurting things smaller than you. Providing you also take on things bigger than you. Then size is irrelevant. Cowards lay in wait for weak prey. Bullies, they really make me sick. Tommy, are you still gonna be a bully? No. Good. Bring him to the water, and you stay here. All right, Tommy, drowning puppies is the next logical move on your inevitable path, but we're gonna skip ahead a few steps. Bring him to the water. What are you doing? What are you doing, Jim? What are you doing? <laughs>
All right, Tommy. Come get this one. What? Thought you were special? Thought we were buddies? Slit your friend's throat. Please don't. Only one of you is leaving here tonight. Please. Please don't do it. Do it! is suffering. Put him out of his misery. <sighs> you can go first. Yeah, okay. Where have you been? Did you eat? No. I bought some pizzas. They're in the kitchen. There should be some left over. I'm good, thanks. Almost time for bed, little boots. But there's no school tomorrow. Well, that's why you're allowed to stay up till almost 1 a.m. <sighs> All right. I gotta get going, too. How much do I owe you for the pizzas? Don't worry about it. Get out of here. It's not your responsibility to always buy dinner for me and my brother. You babysat Kev. The least I can do is cover dinner. Thanks again, Barn. Seriously, I really appreciate it. No problem. And Rusty really appreciates it, too. How is Rusty? Good. Good. You're a good man, Barney. Aren't you going to say goodnight? No. No. That's it. <laughs> Why aren't you going to say goodnight? I, for I forgot. Bet you won't forget again. I won't. I won't. Oh, you won't what? I won't forget. Well, why not? Come on. Let's hear it. Because... Because you're the prettiest, mm -hmm. the smartest. Oh, go on. The, the prettiest, smartest. I already said that. Nice to hear. Continue. Um, the greatest. Oh, that's very kind of you to say, Kevin. <laughs> Safe to say you'll remember next time? I will. Unless I forget. You're dead! That's all there is to it! <laughs> Who needs to use the bucket? <laughs>
What's the matter with you? I ask because you haven't eaten in 14 hours and you look hungry. I'll see you guys down later. It's me. Oh, I'm sorry, Barney. I didn't know you wanted to see me naked. Come on in. Sorry. I just, uh, I'll be up at the house till you're finished. Be right with you. Barn, you're not just messing with you, right? I just didn't want you to see your Christmas gift. No one is trying to spy on the presents. Jeez. I came out there to see if you have the helper uniform handy. Yeah? You thinking Kevin? What uniform? Just be ready by 8 o'clock tomorrow. For what? Tomorrow's Christmas. Someone tell me what's going on. You coming over for dinner tonight? I don't think I can make it tonight. No? Other plans? I met this girl down at the DMV. She has no family out here. We we're gonna grab some dinner. Go barn! You look great. No, seriously. I look ridiculous. Not to those kids at the hospital. To them, you're a hero. Besides, Rusty did it, I did it, and now it's your turn. 
And for some of those kids, it may be their last Christmas. Can you imagine that? Knowing it's your very last Christmas. You'd probably want to savor every last moment. But instead, you're locked up like a prisoner at the mercy of a nurse dependent on her for food, water, bathing, even going to the bathroom. I just don't understand why we can't just drop off the presents. And instead we have to go in there dressed like this and embarrass ourselves. What do you have to be embarrassed about? Do you think Barney's embarrassed? I remember when this was you a few years ago. I know, I told him it was an honor tradition. How was last night? All right, I guess. We're supposed to see her again next week. Who knows? See ya. Thank you, God, I love you. Oh, my baby. Oh, hallelujah, God, I love you. <laughs> Did Izzy really dress like an elf? Yes, Izzy dressed like an elf. But that's when your dad was Santa. I became Santa after he passed. Rusty and Izzy wanted to spend Christmas Day with you, so I rode elfless for a while. The way I see it, you're old enough to sport the years now. You know, you might see some pictures inside of your parents. My mom, too? Sure. She was Mrs. Claus for seven years. Do you think they have pictures of Izzy dressed like an elf? Probably. Are your parents in the dark about what a little monster you are? Or do they just not care? They say, if you can catch them early enough, the most troubled child can be reshaped and grow up right the way they should. The question is, did I catch you early enough? Is that really right to do to someone? I mean, you're either a good apple or a bad apple. Right? And if everyone can be made into a good apple, and we selectively pick who's worth it and who's not, don't we become responsible for the bad ones, for not putting in the effort to fix them? And the ones we fix, they're only good because we change them. And why do they deserve a second chance over the bad ones we passed over? It's one of them questions that'll make your head spin if you think about it for too long. So, you're for reshaping how someone grows? Okay. Are you familiar with bonsai trees? cookies and milk. So you know Gary also eats leather and silk. Oh no no Gary at mummy's wedding ring. Ho 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 Gary the goat eats everything. They're right about one thing. Kids are pretty resilient.
Okay, who's gonna go first? You. Me? Okay. <laughs> that All was right. for me. Alright, this is from Kevin. No way! Oh, so now you can just read it off me and get off the hook quicker, is that it? <laughs> Thank you. This is also for me. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes! Now I can finally get rid of this old one. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, this is for me. I think it was about time you got your own. This is for you. You deserve the best. Thank you. It's for you. Monica. It was your dad's. He used to play it when he had hard times. And then he gave it to me when I had him. real because it is you really think a nine-year-old needs a real gun well Rusty gave me one by the time I was his age you were 14 he didn't give it to you he taught you how to shoot his well you give him a motorcycle helmet okay. right a helmet not a motorcycle you could have got him bullets that he could have fired out of your gun at least with a motorcycle, it's something that he could use when we're not around. He shouldn't be riding motorcycles or firing guns when we're not around, is he? It requires adult supervision. You could have got him certificates from the range or something. Let's get these bullets. Out. Thank you so much. This is Wait, awesome. Okay. Go like that. Right, and then right. spin. And oh, cool. Close. Awesome, right? Right. Yeah. This is so cool. Thank you so much, Izzy. Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm. You're never pointing at yourself, okay? Okay. Okay. Thanks for everything. Thank you. And be safe riding out there. I don't want you getting taken out by some suicidal drunk with the holiday blues.
Need a lift? Don't be afraid. Seriously, you shouldn't be taking right from strangers. I'm harmless. Generally, it's real dangerous taking rides from strangers. It's even dangerous letting strangers in your car. But I figure, you know, it's Christmas, and why would we want to let somebody ruin their Christmas? Because we all don't trust each other. That's ridiculous. You're not a Jew, are you? I didn't mean it like that. I mean, it's the holidays. Uh, you, you know, you uh, you could be uh, in. It's that time of year, and the dates are the same, and they all kind of blend together. I'm not Jewish. And, and even if you were, hey, I got a joke for you. This lady tries to get a room at a hotel. The hotel owner says, "No Jews allowed." So the lady says, I'm not Jewish, I'm a Christian. And I'm offended. So the hotel owner says, so if you're a Christian, who is Jesus' mother? So the lady says, Mary. So then the hotel owner goes, where was Jesus born? And then the lady says, in a stable. So then the hotel owner says, the hotel owner says, why was Jesus born in a stable? And the lady says, because some prick like you wouldn't give a Jew a room at a hotel. People forget Jesus was a Jew. I didn't forget Jesus was a Jew. What I'm saying is, I didn't mean it like that. You, uh, single? I know what you need. I'll show you what you need. Family. That's what it's all about. That is what it's all about. Right? It's infectious. It can't help but make you smile. You know, you're still young. You got a lot of time. Don't wait too long. Actually, I'm already married. That's great. That's great. You got me kids? One. But I can't wait to have another when my husband gets home. He's a Marine. Great, great. Take care, kid. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Dearest Rusty, it's 2.17 a.m. You missed Christmas. This is some bullshit. 
Kevin really needed you at least to call today. It's really hard on him without you around and harder on me. I'm still not seeing anyone. Training every day. I could so kick your ass right now, and I would too. Barney's been great. If it wasn't for him, I don't know what Kevin would do. He doesn't talk to me anymore. Not about serious stuff. I had to find out from Barney that Kev has been getting bullied at school. I took care of it, though. I got Kevin a gun. You should be the one teaching him to shoot, though. I love you. Isabella. Kissed him last. Oh, honey. He said goodbye to you like two minutes ago. He never would have left without saying goodbye to you and Kevin first. I was supposed to be the last one to kiss him goodbye. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry.
that's one way to do it. I thought about it for a long time, decided it wasn't for me. Don't do it because you miss Barney. He wouldn't want that. If you care about his opinion, you should put the gun down. Or shoot me. <laughs> That's what I would do if I were you. I will never be like you.
Inside my family tree, we live.